This is Glenn Hughes, the voice of rock. Hey everybody, this is Pat Torpy from Mr. Big. And you're listening to Music Mania. I want you to want me. The dream police. Da, 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 da. Your mama's alright. Your daddy's alright. But just seem a little bit weak. Scream for me, Brazil! Scream for me, Brazil! In the words of ACDC, we roll tonight to the guitar bite and for those about to rock I salute you you are now listening to the music mania podcast brought to you by cd warehouse in gladstone the number one hard rock podcast in the midwest featuring hard-hitting interviews with rocks living legends and now here is your host clint Schweitzer. welcome to a Super Bowl edition of the Music Mania podcast. And I say that because we are based out of Kansas City. I'm a lifelong Chiefs fan. I have waited for my entire life. I'm 35. The Chiefs haven't been in a Super Bowl in 50 years. And this weekend it will happen. It's been surreal. Just, um, you know, watching the team go through all the media sessions and the limelight being really on Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes and what this has meant to the city. It's unbelievable. So excited to be a part of that, and I hope that uh, everybody out there is ready to enjoy the big game this weekend. Hopefully, you've got a you know a party to go to. I myself am heading to Miami for the game. Can't wait to get down to South Beach and uh, see my team play in a Super Bowl. It's like a dream come true. It's a bucket list item for me for sure. So this podcast, as we have just been so blessed so far in 2020, we are backlogged with interviews. We've got so many great interviews coming up. Um, I've got two guests this week, tremendous ones at that. For the first time on this very podcast, Revolution Saints, Dead Daisies drummer Dean Castronovo is going to be joining us to talk about his time and journey playing with Ozzy, Sammy Hagar, so much more. The new Revolution Saints album, Rise, it just came out on January 24th and it is incredible. If you like that melodic hard rock style with uh, great hooks, amazing choruses, Dean is actually singing on this record. Yeah, that's right. He's in the band with Jack Blades from Night Ranger and Doug Aldrich uh, from Dio and Whitesnake. And the vocal duties belong to the drummer, Dean Castronovo, one of the great drummers in rock. Going to talk to him about really his personal life and how he went completely off the rails on a meth bender for a couple of weeks uh, several years ago and how he was able to overcome that and you know be clean now for over four years and uh, be a part of these tremendous bands. Revolution Saints, this is their third album. Again, it's called Rise. You can check it out um, on Amazon, Spotify, anywhere you get your digital music. Um, definitely go... Uh, get this album. They've already have three videos um, for the album out. One's for a song called When the Heartache Has Gone, which is just tremendous. It really is like a throwback nostalgic 80s song. It's got that great chorus that you you know love from the 80s. Uh, they also have a video for A Price We Pay and Closer. But this album is just tremendous. It's what rock music really needs right now. And to have these caliber of players, you think about Jack Blades from Night Ranger playing bass, you got Doug Aldridge from Dio, one of the best lead guitarists there is. He's also in Dead Daisies with Dean. So can't wait to get into all this and much more with Dean. He's just a high energy guy, brings it every time. And that really, you know, exemplifies itself with uh, his drumming style, which is also tremendous. So not only that, we're going to be bringing on um, a relatively new act for many people anyway. But Motley Crue, Def Leppard, and Poison, Joan Jett have announced that uh, Tuck Smith and the Restless Hearts will be the opening act for the stadium tour this summer. And I tell you what, if rock is dead, someone forgot to tell Tuck Smith. He flies the flag for the genre in the same way as today's rock idols have. So it's only fitting uh, he opened for some of the biggest rock bands of all time. Of course, Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Joan Jett, and Poison. They will introduce Tuck Smith and the Restless Hearts via their upcoming stadium tour. Um, after cutting his teeth, among many other things, for nine years as the frontman for uh, the rock band The Biters, Tuck's solo debut sees him further expanding the reaches of his musical vision into an album that unifies musical styles, uh, multiple musical styles, really. His debut album, Looking for Love, Ready for War, showcases the versatility of his songwriting. And I tell you what, Tuck Smith, he's one of those guys that just doesn't give a damn. I'm telling you what, when you hear this interview, which I taped uh, about a week ago, I was actually still sick, really sick when I taped the interview. So you're going to hear me and my voice not at its best. 
But Tuck Smith, is he's hilarious. He's down to the point, and you know what? He's given it his best shot to be able to be the opening act on this tour when he's a relatively unknown to a lot of the country. This is so great. This is why I love doing this show. This is why this podcast means so much to me, because not only do we go back and interview some of the great rock icons of the past, but how about rock icons of the future? Last week, we had Danny Rexon from Crazy Licks on. Their album, Forever Wild, was my favorite album of 2019. I you know, officially made it the Music Mania podcast um, number one album of 2019. So in addition to going back and interviewing such great stars that we've done, you know, guys like Joe Elliott from Def Leppard, uh, Ted Nugent's been on this show. You know, we like to bring on guests that are really are ready to, for the spotlight themselves. So uh, big time stuff coming up with Tuck Smith. Uh, he's a great dude. You're going to love this interview. He's hilarious. And uh, just right to the point. That's what we love. So without further ado, we're going to get to our first interview, which is with Dean Castronovo, the drummer from Revolution Saints and Dead Daisies. But before we do that, got to tell you about our sponsor, CD Warehouse in Gladstone, Missouri. Guys, for over 22 years, a staple of the Northland, they buy, sell, and trade CDs, DVDs, vinyl, and more. Do not let the vibe of the old school record store go by the wayside. Give them a visit off Antioch Road in the Northland today. Tell them Music Mania sent you, and there will be a discount, or it's on us. Good afternoon. Oh my God, Dean, it's Clint Schweitzer from Music Mania. How you doing, man? Brother Chris, what's up, big man? Dude, this is so many years in the making. You know, every time we uh, we do an interview, they always throw us Doug, or they, they throw us Jack, but now it's finally happened, Dean. You're finally joining the show, and I've never been more excited. Oh, oh dude, let me tell you, they always go to the first stringers first. <laughs> hey, not... I'm the second stringer, and I don't mind it. <laughs> not so fast, my friend. You're handling vocal duties now on Revolution Saints, man. You're you're in the limelight now. This is all, this, you, you know, you... The vocals are in. I, 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 I moved up. I moved up a tier. I don't know if I'm the quarterback. I could be like a, a running back or something, or tight end, something like that. Only my end isn't very tight because I'm old. But what well, you know? Well, we've all, <laughs> we've all been there. I tell you what. This what an exciting time. I mean, the, the the album Rise just came out a couple days ago, so perfect timing on this. Revolution Saints once again coming up with a, a wonderful melodic hard rock album. Dean, just I know you got to be really proud of this thing. You guys have already done three videos. Yeah. Uh, just kind of talk about. Your level of excitement, what kind of the feedback's been so far here on uh, these last few days? Well, you know, so far I've, I've gotten, you know, really positive stuff. I mean, it's been great. Uh, you know, you get the, the once in a while person that says, oh, it's a little too sappy for me. Well, you know what? That's that's what I like. Sappy's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, I, I, I really enjoy what, this, what the chemistry of this band is all about. And I love working with Jack. I mean, he's a freaking icon. And Doug, one of the most underrated guitars on the planet, man. I mean, he can he can spar with the big boys, and and I love working with him. He's not only an amazing guitarist, but he's he's like a brother to me, you know. And he stuck with me for the rest of his life. I'm his drummer. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm grateful to work with both these guys, and you know, the, the response has been really, really good, really positive, and I'm I'm grateful for that. You know, you you can't get any better than the fans saying, you know what, we approve. De- definitely approve, and I think that uh, you know it's again, it's great to hear y- your vocals, you know, get shared in the spotlight. I mean, let's face it. I mean, Jack Blades has a great voice. He's done so many great songs, and with Night Ranger and in Damn Yankees. But you yeah. getting to sing, a, uh, you know, with this band, just talk about that. I mean, you've obviously had renowned backing vocals in all the bands that you've been in over the years. But to actually be able to sing these songs, what what's that been like for you, handling the drum duties and uh, singing? It's a it's a dream come true, bro. I never really caught this opportunity until. Uh, you know, actually it was when Steve uh, Jerry was having some vocal issues and they were like, oh dude, you know, give him a little bit of a break. We'll let him take a little bit of a rest and why don't you sing a couple of the tunes? And, and it just carried on. The fans were like, dude, sing more, sing more. So it was something by happenstance, bro. I'm a drummer that happens to sing. I, I'm not a singer that happens to play drums. You know what I'm saying? Like Don Henley to me, he's a better vocalist than he is a drummer. I, he's freaking solid as hell, but he's, you know, I, I love his voice. He's a smoking singer. For me, I'm a drummer. I mean, that's where I'm the most comfortable. So to put me as a lead singer, I'm still learning, bro. I'm, I, I'm not a lead singer. I mean, I am, but I, I, I'm willing to learn whatever. I mean, I, I listen to Jack, and Jack's great at producing vocals and stuff. I mean, so is Alessandro. And, and they pull things out of me that, that I would never think of doing. So I'm still, I'm still a drummer that happens to sing. And it's, it's a dream come true because I've always wanted to sing, but... You know, I never had the confidence. I was like, mm, you know, and being able to do the Journey songs when I was in that band was, was an honor, bro. 
I mean, it was just an honor. I mean, to 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 sing those songs that that were the soundtrack of my teen years. You know, it's just it's pretty heavy. Well, <laughs> you know, so I'm grateful to be able to do it. I think you guys have provided what is you know I know we're a few months early, but this to me is almost one of those perfect uh, summer albums that that I think coming up here is going to be great to be blasting uh, when the temperatures get better and people are riding around with the, the tops down because this music is just what. I think hard rock needs that this hooky melodic hard rock music. You guys together have yeah. made this happen. You've done three videos so far: "Closer," "A Price We Pay," and of course, "When the Heartache Is Gone." Amazing, great, so, yeah. amazing song there. How big have the videos been for you guys? I mean, it seems like the visibility is really high when you get the videos out there well in advance, and people kind of get to yeah. to hear the songs and see the see the videos beforehand. That's pretty cool. I love it, dude. The, you know, it's kind of a bummer that MTV went the other direction. You know, but. You know, it's it's nowadays. You know, thank God for social media because we were able to put our stuff out, and you know, on YouTube and stuff, and people can go grab it instead of waiting all day long to see maybe one or two videos on MTV. So it, it's it's the only medium we have, really. You know, when we do these videos, we know okay, it's going to go up on YouTube, and then people are going to post it and they're going to share it, and and people will see it. But you know, it wasn't like the old days, man. When I was a kid, and, and freaking MTV was blazing and. All the bands, I mean, that was it. I mean, I can remember getting up at 7.30 every morning to turn on MTV when my dad left for work and just crank it all day long, literally all day long. And just just amazed at, at that medium because we'd never seen anything like that. Now it's like, well, that's gone. So thank God for social media. Yeah, and it's been huge for, for these videos. Now, for those that aren't aware, this is your guys' third album together. Of course, uh, the follow-up, uh, they're following up Light in the Dark, which was a great album from a couple years ago. But I mean, this band, it just seems to, to kind of keep coming back. You guys, every couple years are doing a new album. Is, is yeah. it, is, you it's know. Basically, it's basically schedules, dude. I mean, right. we could do an album every year if we could. I think, right. you know, Jack, he's so busy with Night Ranger. That's his baby. And we totally get that. And now Doug and I, we are dead daisies, man, nonstop all this year. So when we do find that time, the magic happens, man. And it's fun. It's a blast. We, we look forward to doing it together. We really do. I, um, I think you guys have really found something here. This album, especially Rise, I think it's your best work yet. But you mentioned the Dead Daisies. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of changes in the Dead Daisies camp over the last uh, few months. I mean, obviously, yeah. um, you got Marco out, you've got um, John out, and in comes Glenn Hughes, the voice of rock and alumnus of this show. Huge fan of his. Oh, what do you guys got planned? Because you talk about being kind of the next year, man. This is a, yeah. a new lineup, and the, I assume this is going to yeah. be quite a big deal coming up here. Yeah, the, the new record, we recorded it in uh, Marseille, France. Spent about a month there. Um, I did my drum tracks in like, I think, 10 days and, and went home. And, and actually, I just finished background vocals last week. And I hadn't heard the stuff yet. I had just, you know, I had the scratch stuff. And so I played my drums to the scratch uh, demos. And my God, dude, I'm, I'm blown away at what Doug, uh, Glenn, and uh, David came up with. I'm, I was just like, I'm stunned. I was I'm stunned. It was like, wow. This is a lot different than I imagined. It's incredible. For me, it's incredible. And dude, Glenn Hughes, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He's, not only, I knew he was a great singer, dude. And I knew he played bass amazingly. But to actually play with him, it's like a hand in a glove, bro. I, he's a very percussive bassist. And his sound, is, he's got a little bit of distortion on it, so it kind of growls. It's a lot like, to me, it, re it reminds me of Getty Lee. He's just got that, that attack. And, and you just, I just freaking fit right in with him he's so damn good my god <laughs> well, I, I can't wait to, to to hear what it sounds like um because i was a big fan of the daisies um all this time and i mean obviously it's kind of been a strange band it's almost like a, ba a vagabond band because there's been so many yeah. members come through there i think you've been there a couple years now is it like now yeah. with this lineup like hey we want to kind of sustain this this is kind of what we want to go forward with or is it like well you know it's always up in the air well, and who knows maybe brian titchy uh up. comes in for <laughs> you someday <laughs> Yeah, well, it is up in the air, bro. It's one of those things where, you know, it's a collective. And the beauty thing with David Lowy is, you know, he's not afraid to switch and change and try different things. I mean, it's it's when John decided to leave and Margaret decided to leave, it was, you know, David Edwards, our manager, and David Lowy said, you know what, let's 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 try to bag the white whale. And we got him. <laughs> and then, you know, with Glenn, I mean, you can't get any bigger than that. So uh, having him sing and play bass uh, for us, I mean, I hope it lasts for a long time, dude. I mean, it, but you never know. You just never know. It, it, that's the beauty of the Dead Daisies. It switches and changes all the time. And I, I, I like that fact that it never gets stale. There's always something new. And uh, I miss John and, and Marco terribly. I love them. They're brothers to me. 
Um, but you know what? I'm 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 excited to, to check this out with Glenn on the road. It should be a blast. Well, Dean, as, uh, of all that you've done, and I mean you've. The, You've been around so many wonderful artists. I mean, from Sammy Hagar to Ozzy and, and Journey and Steve Vai, all that you've done. Is yeah. is it kind of surreal to you? And is it to the point where your career, where you're like being able to do bands like Revolution Saints and being able to do bands like Dead Daisies, that you're excited to be able to flex your muscle that way because you've been a part of so many other big projects. But is it more maybe gratifying now to be able to be, you know, really be a part of that writing process and, and put up these yeah. great albums? And what, what's the kind of the emotions for you when it comes to this whole career you've had? Well, I got to be honest, bro. I mean, there was a time there about five years ago and I never thought I'd play again. So, you know, I'm grateful to Jesus Christ every day. I'm not joking that I am able to do what I love again. And, and to make a living at it. I mean, and that's secondary. I just love playing. And uh, for me, it's it's a perpetual state of gratitude every day, bro. I live in gratitude every freaking day. I mean, I look back at my career and I go, oh my God, I did. I played on that record. Oh, I forgot I did this. And You know, my son, actually, Kyle, who plays for uh, Wednesday 13, is kind of a metal band. And uh, he's like, Dad, you remember this? I'm like, wow, where did you find that? You know, it's like, he's like really, he's like the king of discography. He knows everything I've done. So it, it's humbling, bro. It really is. I mean, how many people at 55 years old have had the career that I've had? I mean, I could I could retire today going, you know what? I pulled off some amazing stuff. I, I played with some amazing guys. And I'm grateful for that. Uh, that's tremendous. And I'll tell you what, huge Wednesday 13 fan here. I, uh, we've oh, dude, awesome. I mean, you got to listen to my boy. He's a monster, I, bro. He kicks my butt. Yeah. Uh, just saw just saw him in the last year or so. I'm pretty sure your son Kyle was on board. Uh, we've had Wednesday on the show yes. like three or four times. Like So, yeah, I'm a huge yeah. Wednesday fan from way back. Like awesome. that horror metal stuff. Like, I don't know, something about it. Like, I, I, I just huge fan of it. So that's great that your son's a part oh, of that. Yeah. That's, that's pretty sweet, man. You must be really proud. Oh, that's, yeah, no. that's a cool deal. Oh, dude, extremely. I mean, I, we go and see him play when he comes into Portland. He's actually, they're on the road right now with 69 yeah, Eyes. Yeah, yep, but, great uh, man. The, the year before, last, all of last year, he was out on the road with uh, doing the uh, uh, the Static X uh, 20th anniversary of um, a Wisconsin Death Trip. So they were out there, and it was just unreal to watch my boys. I go, okay, I can't do that. Nope, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so good. But the best part about my son is he's He's the most humble young man. He was raised right by his mama. That's all I can say. He's just a good, solid kid. Didn't run through all the traps that I went through with the drugs and the and the crap. He stayed he stayed straight edge and he's doing the greatest things, man. And I'm extremely proud of him. Well, you've alluded to it, Dean, and so I got to ask you. I mean, I, you you've been through some some ups and downs in your life and your personal life. Yes, sir. You have yeah. always come across to me as just someone that's really down to earth, tells it like it is. You're just a, a tremendous, uh, you know, spirit, great energy, love oh. the drumming, all that. So just kind of talk about, you know, where you've come in, here in the last few years and, you know, kind of how, how things have yeah. been going. Well, dude, you know, I, I had some issues with, uh, you know, with drugs, obviously. Everybody sure. knows that. Yeah. Um, and um, I, uh, I went on a 24-day meth run, believe it or not. I, and, and I have never done meth. So it was, it was bad. It, I, I was hallucinating. It was horrible. And I, you know, thank God, my wife and I are still together. My wife, Dee Dee, and I, I mean, she, she knew me before I was a drugged out mess. We grew up together. I mean, I, I've known her since she was 14 years old. We grew up together. Wow. So she knew. She goes, this is not him. This is him messed up. And, and I did some heinous, heinous stuff, bro. Obviously, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm not proud of it. And I live with that guilt every day. And, and me staying clean is my living amends to them. I mean, I, I do that because I love them and I owe them. My family, her, her family. I mean, that's this what it's about, man. And like I said, I, uh, let me see, I think I got four years. I looked at it today, four years, seven months, and three weeks today. Wow. <laughs> I know I've got a little app that says clean day. And I look every day, I go, okay, I got this many days. Okay, I'm doing this. You know, it's it's really good for me because I, I you know, I never had any problems on the road. I didn't use on the road. I brought my A game with Journey. I never wanted to screw that up. It was when I came home. And it's a very small town, and everybody wants to party with the rock star. And, and it says, here, have this. Here, you can have it. Here, take this. And it was easy, and it, it destroyed my life. And I'm grateful today. I mean, I, honestly, bro, I should be dead. With all the crap mm. that I put into my body, I should be dead. And I'm not, and I, I still, it's a mystery to me why. I'm still around, but you know, it's, it, I'm grateful that I am. Well, you're here and you're giving us some uh, some tremendous music, and you're just doing what you should be doing, and it's so great. 
uh, that, that you're at this point, man, because it's just to, to be, you know, giving a gift of, you know, certain records just stand out. You give that gift. It's something that it doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to everyone. And I think that's going to be the case with not only the new Des Aziz, but definitely the, the Revolution Saints with Rise. It's like you, it's like your gift to, to, to the world, man. And it's something that people are already, I mean, just four days into this and I'm getting calls and texts every day. Like, man, have you heard this? Uh, some people not even sure who the members are. Like, wait, what is this? Is these guys new? Are these, is this a new band? I'm like, oh my God, no, this is like the greatest collection of three guys in the world. And so... Oh, yeah. It's funny, dude. I gotta say, I, I was listening to an interview um, on what was it? I think it's called the Classic Metal Show. Yeah, and yeah. they were saying, you know what? If they packaged this as a journey record, it would have <laughs> sold a million records by now. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's kind of what it is. It's like nobody knows this band and radio. I mean, thank God for you guys. You know that you're you're out there and you're, and you're putting your neck out on the line to, to you know to promote it and to, to to play it. And that's huge for us, man. We got to thank you for that. Well, Big no. time. Oh, of course. I mean, that, that's what it's all about for people like me, that this music is such a part of their lives. And uh, these these yeah. albums don't come along every year, Dean. I mean, all the time. I mean, the, this yeah. is what I like. This is what so many people from, from that era, say, call it from you know the 70s, the 80s, whatever it is. This is that yeah. type of music that you think about whenever you, you know, it's yeah. nostalgic music. You know what I mean? And hard yeah. driving rock and roll. That's what it is. And yep. Well, Very. for me, I, I listen to everything, dude. Honestly, yeah. anything from Cat Stevens to Slipknot. I mean, I'm a huge Slipknot fan. I yeah. love Stone Sour. I love Slipknot. But there's times, man, that I'll just I'll put on a Cat Stevens record and just and or Bread or Journey or anything. Just just you know, dive into the moment. So you know, for me, the the music of my time, you know, the '80s, you know, late late '70s, you know, into mid '80s. That was that was my my growing years as a musician. So it's, you know, the, the stuff is really dear to me. And to be able to, to play that kind of stuff, is, it's, it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's fulfilling. It just feels good. It's, it's where I live. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that, that's definitely what the album is. And I, I know you talked about, about Jack, your, your, your bandmate, and I know you talked about Doug Aldrich. I mean, it's, but when you actually look at them as musicians and what they've done and what they've accomplished, I remember like my, when I was introduced to Doug, he was uh, the guitarist in Dio. Then I realized he was in a band called Lion in the 80s. I was a huge fan of that stuff. Yeah. Believe me. Yep. And, uh, of course, Jack Blades. I mean, my God. Like, this is just kind of, I mean, these guys, this chemistry you guys have, it must be just impeccable because not every musician can you just stick three guys together and it, and it work. I mean, there's got to be a really good yeah. chemistry there. Oh, yeah. Dude, for me, I mean, I, I still, I look at Jack and I go, oh, my God, I'm working with Jack Blades. I mean, and, you know, he'll laugh and kick like, oh, come on. But it's the truth. I will never see myself as one of their peers, you know what I'm saying? Because they were my heroes. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to say, well, yeah, I'm right up here with you, because I'm not. You know, I look at them like, they're my heroes. Journey, when I, I, I can remember walking around, uh, you know, the arenas with my drum tech, and I would look, literally stop and look at them and go, dude, I'm the drummer for Journey. <laughs> it, it's just, it's humbling, bro. I, you know, nobody, not very many people get that shot. And I, I'm grateful every day that I got to do what I've done. Um, it's 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 amazing to me that you know I get to do what I love and they actually pay me for it, which is pretty darn cool. Yeah, that that's the cherry on top, certainly there. Um, I know, obviously, when it comes to Revolution Saints, you talked about the schedules. Um, you got a lot coming up with Dead Daisies. I know. Uh, God, I think uh, Jack and and Night Ranger just uh, you know, announced a big tour with Sammy Hagar and White Snake. But are there, is live yeah. performances is that something that uh, c could ever happen? C could ever pop up for Revolution Saints? <laughs> Well, let's put it this way. If if we have a song that's huge, or the record sells bajillions, you know, we're going to have no choice but to have to play. Right. I mean, <laughs> you know, you look at promoters and managers and go, oh, there's money to be made. Well, yeah, that's all fine and good. But, you know, if, if we have to have some sort of pretty decent success in order to do it, because nobody's going to walk away from their gigs. I mean, right. Jack ain't going to just go, yeah, I'm going to take off and I'm going to go play some clubs with the uh, Revolution State. I mean, he's just not going to do it. Me, I would do it. I just don't care because I love the music. But <laughs> Jack Scott, you know, that's his baby. You know, that's his baby, and he's built that from the ground up. And to see him walk away would be stupid. You know, he wouldn't. I wouldn't expect him to. So if we have a, a big hit, or you know, we got a song that actually gets some uh, some traction, yeah, we'll be doing shows. I would imagine we just got to work out scheduling, and that's the biggest issue. Because I mean, I'm a I'm a loyal dead Daisy. I mean, they gave me a shot when nobody else would. You know, when all my stuff happened, so I owe them a huge debt of gratitude, and I'm, I'm not bailing. I, you know, I'm, they're stuck with me. <laughs> so that's the way it works, man. I, I love them to death. 
So. Uh, there are worse drummers to be stuck with. I'll tell you what, Dean, I, I can't tell you how much I, I've enjoyed this. I've, I've wanted to have you on the show uh, really ever since we started awesome. five years ago, and it's finally worked out. When, they, when uh, Jody, our, our public, the publicist, said, hey, I got I got Revolution State's available, I was like, it's got to be Dean or I'm out, because I've had... I've ta- <laughs> oh, I, dude, I owe you 20 bucks for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've, ta- I was like, I, I've talked Wait, to Doug. So like Doug, Doug Aldridge and I have argued about football too many times on the air. You know, we get off on tangents. Yeah. Uh, so, you know what? It's yeah. got to be Dean. And you, you know what? You, you you bring the energy so much, and it's like it makes, you know, oh. anyone that interviews you makes you raise their game, too, and it just makes it that much more intense, man. I love it. Well, I love it, too, bro. I can't thank you enough for having me, bro. I appreciate it very much. Oh, it's I been do. a pleasure. I'll tell you what. We will see you out on the road somewhere here in yes. this United States, brother, and we'll come and, and say hi and do it the right way. Uh, whether it be here in, in Kansas City or somewhere in the country, man, we'll make it happen. Please come out, man. Uh, anybody, all you guys, come and see us. Okay. They're going to be in the States probably September, August, September. So Amazing. come out and see it. It's going to be awesome. Hell yeah, Dean. Thanks so much, man. We'll catch up soon. All right, brother. Take care, my friend. Thank you again. Thank you. Well, that was just what I always imagined. Like, I've always wanted to have Dean on this podcast. You know, we've always, you know, we've had uh, Jack Blades on. We've had Doug Aldrich's bandmates. We've had several members of the Dead Daisies on, including Glenn Hughes. Uh, we've had John Karabi on in the past. And so really to be able to come full circle and have Dean on, he just, the energy is infectious. And he's a great guy. You know, he's he's been through some personal stuff. There's no doubt about it. He admitted it. He said he's done some heinous things, but it's not, uh, you know, where, you're com- where you came from. It's where you're going. And I think that, being in these bands and being a part of these big records is huge for him and it's kept him on the straight and narrow and congratulations to him. Uh, the album again is called Rise by Revolution Saints and we can't wait to check out the new Dead Daisies album which is going to feature the voice of rock and our good friend Glenn Hughes. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring on our second guest. I taped this interview uh, about a week ago and I was uh, really sick so when you hear my voice, it's going to sound a little off, but what matters is the content and the uh, the stories and the the great stuff from Tuck Smith. So we're going to take you to this interview with Tuck Smith. Tuck, what a pleasure it is. How the hell are you, man? Welcome to the show, brother. I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm late. I oh. was on, a, on another podcast. Oh. Over. Oh, God, not a problem at all. Tell I'll tell you what, Tuck. We're in Kansas City. We just sent this Chiefs to the Super Bowl yesterday. We are just riding high. Things are going great here as it is for the first time really in a long time. So you know what? All good, my friend. How, how's it going? This is a kind of a big time for you. A little bit, little bit of some important uh, situations coming up for you. New single, tour coming up. This is huge, man. How, how are you feeling right now? I'm, I'm really excited, man. I'm super excited. Super grateful. Uh, I don't know. That's about it fucking ready to rock <laughs> well uh you know this is a you know a long time coming for you and you've just kind of unveiled all of this i mean we've we've got um you know the new single that everybody's you know been talking about and, and it's called what kind of love you produced uh this video as well just kind of talk about what you were kind of looking for what you're trying to get out of the song and the video because you know it seems to me kind of like lyrically it kind of it kind of goes with uh, the visuals you see in the video it was a very well done and a, just an amazing in your face melodic rock song man it's great stuff thanks man yeah well, with my other band i was in for a long time I, I made a bunch of videos with my good friend raheem and so i love working with people that you have relationships with just because there's a mutual respect and you kind of understand each other so uh, it's, I'm really blessed to have a team to kind of help me fulfill my creative vision. And I, I think that if you first hear the track and you don't listen to the lyrics, you might not get it. You might think the meaning is different. And so I wanted to do a video that kind of <clears throat> helped you to kind of go with the narrative of, of the lyric more. So, you know, I would just lay in bed at night and, and play the song in my head and come up with visuals and I kept having that kind of idea. Uh, and then over a couple months, I just kind of brought it to life. Well, it's incredible. Congratulations um, on that. It's uh, it's it's a great Thank song. You. It's like what you you know. It's like what I think you know. Music has been missing. You know, just sort of that that straight ahead. You have so many influences, and they all kind of come out there. Um, but you you know you were in a band, a singer in a band called Biters for for quite a while. Why was sort of now the time to to take this kind of in a solo direction for you? <laughs> Well, to not give away too many details, there was a lot of, of legal issues happening with biters, and I, and I kind of had really no choice but but to move on. Um, it was 
devastating, a little bit sad, and I honestly didn't know how I was going to continue playing music. Um, and it just, I kind of did it one day at a time. I just, my first idea was, I'm just going to write a record my, myself, a solo record, and if, just record it here in Atlanta with my, my friend. If nobody ever listens to it, then on my deathbed, I'll, I'll know I have this piece of art. Um, and that was where it really started, and it kind of just kept blossoming and, and kept pulling in these different duet directions to get where I am now. So yeah, the, the story is really, really wild. Well, the new album, um, which is called Looking for Love, Ready for War, produced by legendary Rob Cavello. Talk about that, how important that is in kind of putting all this together. Obviously, if people don't know, I mean, you know, Green Day, Eric Clapton, My Chemical Romance, this guy's a legend. How, how important was uh, the collaboration with him to, to seeing this vision out? I think that I was so excited to work with him. I've, I've always been a fan of his records. They've always sounded so good sonically. And it was an honor to work with him. And I love producing producing records and working with Dan. So to be able to kind of see how he worked, get in his brain, see how he, he, he solved problems, it was like going to some kind of rock and roll college. It was really amazing to see how he worked. Uh, I will say that he did not fuck with the creative vision at all. He did not try to turn me to anybody else. He did not reference what was trendy or hot. He simply went in there with my song and said, let's make these fucking rad and let's make them sound as good as possible. And it was a really, really fun record to make. Um, it was just amazing. Well, you can uh, go to the website right now and um, check out uh, the single, What Kind of Love. It's also, of course, on YouTube. Um, the website is Tuck Smith and the RestlessHearts.com. Um, Tuck, so uh, a, a bit of some huge news coming out about a week ago. You, of course, land um, kind of the, the, the opening spot on the uh, massive um, Def Leppard Motley Crue Joan Jet Poison Stadium Tour. Um, is, is it kind of surreal? How the, the, I mean, this is amazing. This tour is going to be one of the biggest rock tours of the decade, and here you are landing smack dab right in the middle of it. How big is this for you, my friend? I feel like where I was a year ago to now, it feels like I've slid into an alternate dimension. It truly does. I, I just... It's, it does feel unreal. Super excited. I, I, I definitely feel worthy. I've been, I've been slumming it in vans my whole life, playing every punk rock club up and down, every coast in the United States, all over England. So to me, it just feels really great to kind of be on the big stage with some of the rock and roll's icons. Um, it, it's amazing, man. I don't know what else to say, but it's just... Well, what, uh, you know, because there are so many influences in your music, I mean, you talk about kind of, uh, you know, that, that this kind of hard driving hard rock could be, you know, if you're a fan of a uh, Bruce Springsteen, a Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, and, but, but yet here you are on this tour with these legendary acts. I mean, how, I, I mean, we're, we're uh, Motley and Def Leppard kind of influences for you. I mean, just kind of, kind of talk about your musical upbringing. I, I think that I definitely was a fan of, of Motley Crue uh, growing up. But I think the biggest connection, I, I would imagine Def Leppard and Nikki Six's favorite bands were kind of stuff that influences me. Stuff like T-Rex, Cheap Trick, The Sweet, Slave, things like that are, are what really uh, influenced me. Early Alice Cooper, um, a lot of 70s power pop and I guarantee you some of Nikki Six's favorite bands are those ones I just mentioned, and I think that's kind of a, a big connection. But, yeah, Def Leppard's great. Joan Jett, fucking amazing. Huge, hugely inspirational for me. Well, it's going to be great. We're going to have you here in Kansas City June 23rd at Kauffman Stadium. You know, 40,000-seat stadium, no big deal, right? No pressure there. And no it big deal. Right, and it, and it concludes in L.A. at, at the brand-new SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles, and that seat's about 70000 So, again, no no pressure going on there. Um, <laughs> what, <laughs> but you, you actually... Have a good hair day. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. Um, but you actually have some, some dates coming up here in just a couple days uh, there in the southeast where you are kind of reside. You're going to be in Raleigh um, on January 21st and then um, in Asheville on the 23rd and then in, back in Nashville... 
um, on uh, February 12th. So you got some tune-up uh, gigs coming up, man. Uh, how, how many of those are you get, planning on playing? And then kind of what's going to be the plan after uh, the this summer tour ends? I think what's happening right now is we're going to just try to stay as busy as possible <laughs> doing club shows up until the summer tour. We're submitted for a lot of tours. There's, there's no telling what we're going to get. But I know uh, there's going to be an international plan. We're going to take it over to Europe. We're going to take it over uh, to Great Britain. So it's going to be a big international rock and roll extravaganza. That's what it's all about. That's what I think music has been missing. I mean, so many of these bands, I mean, Motley Crue has been gone for four years. So many bands, you know, Neil Peart from Rush just passed away. There's so many bands that are disappearing, that are dying. How important is it for you to kind of continue to, to, to wave this flag and to, con- and to continue this? Because, like I said, it's what kind of uh, American mainstream music's been missing. I think, without get, getting too deep on it, I think when you see bands like the, like this stadium tour, and these guys have been around from the early 80s to the mid-late 70s, I think people are starting to dawn on promoters and big touring companies that when these guys are gone, there's really nobody to fill their shoes. And I think people are starting to understand they kind of need to nurture up-and-coming rock bands. We have the next generation of, of rock and roll icons and people that are going to be able to fill these stadiums, uh, which is a really good thing in a long time coming. Absolutely well said. Can't wait for it. Can't wait to get you here June 23rd. Um, the new single, man, is, is, is just tremendous. Um, best of luck on the new album, Tuck. Thank you so much for joining us to talk about all this. Continued success, my friend. Congratulations on everything, and we'll catch up soon, my friend. Thank you for being so awesome and supportive, man. I really appreciate it. Always, you. brother. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Huge thanks to both of our guests, Dean Castronovo from Revolution Saints and Dead Daisies, Tuck Smith, Tuck Smith and the Restless Hearts. Guys, Check out, uh, you know, both acts for sure. Uh, if you're looking for just some great melodic hard rock, you know, with hooks and choruses, you want to check out this album Rise uh, by Revolution Saints. You're going to just love this album. I know it came out here in January, but really this is to me a summer anthemic rock album. So get ready to blast it all summer long with the top down. Um, and we just can't, you know, put that over enough. And that same goes with Tuck Smith. Uh, you've heard, uh, of course, the single, uh, which is called What Kind of Love. Check that out on YouTube. Tuck produced the video himself. It's really funny and just got this great cook, great chorus. You know, when it comes to Tuck Smith and the Restless Hearts, the music, it could be any number of influences and you hear it all over the place from Tom Petty and Motley Crue themselves. Uh, so this is going to be, I think, a huge tour for them. They're going to be opening for Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Poison and Joan Jett here on uh, the stadium tour, which is coming up this summer. So be sure to get there early and check out uh, Tuck Smith. Guys, we always thank you for joining us and for you know hitting that subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify. Any way you choose to take in the show, we really appreciate it. And just, you know, for making the show what it is. After all these years, you know, more than five years in now and all the great guests and all the things that we've been able to do, look forward to just a tremendous uh, concert season coming up. I've got Aerosmith in Vegas, heading to Vegas um, on February the 7th. And we're going to check out the Aerosmith show, I think, the next day, the 8th. So big things coming up. We have some huge interviews coming up. Last week, we teased Kevin Martin from Candlebox. That is coming up. I have some great things coming up. Brian Titchy, our good friend, joining us to talk about uh, his tribute to Rush. They have He has a new single coming out. Uh, so a lot of big things coming up here on the podcast. I've got taping some interviews later this week, one of which is with Lips from Anvil. Oh, my goodness. I've always wanted to do that to talk with Lips or a member of Anvil. I just love the Anvil story. You all remember the uh, documentary. So all that's coming up and much, much more here on the Music Media Podcast. So keep it dialed in here as we take off into the stratosphere here in 2020.